Hey there, I'm further reading. Today I'm going to go over some more generic tips, kind of like my older videos. Uh, these are all things that I like doing in my forts, but I can't really make a full video about each of them. So I figured I would just talk about all of them now. The first tip I want to talk about is guilds and why it can be a good idea to get some guilds going ASAP in your fortress. For most people, guilds are just something that they will build when they get a petition. But for certain tasks, it is worthwhile getting a guild up straight away. In fact, even the first thing you might want to do in your fort is get certain guilds up. This is because a guild is not just a place for people to socialize, although right now all the people in my guilds are socializing. But also now and again, they will lead demonstrations in these guilds. This will allow the dwarves leading demonstrations to skill up in the skill, as well as teaching that skill to other dwarves in your fortress. In order to train your dwarves, you will need to change the permissions for the guild hall. This first level, only people who have the profession are allowed to use it. At this level, any of your citizens can go in. At this level, any of your citizens and long-term residents can come in. At this level, all visitors are welcome. One advantage of all visitors welcome, outsiders can come visit your fort who may have much higher skill in the professions than your own dwarves. In order to be able to teach anyone, a dwarf needs to have at least novice in the relevant skill. Although I'm not 100% sure if this is the limit or not. If you know for sure, Feel free to comment down below. When I'm working, you can add at least one point to make someone a novice. So once you have the initial skills that you want for your first dwarves, it might be worthwhile to add a couple of novices here and there, just so you can have people training your dwarves in your guild halls. A couple of ones that I like doing early on in my forts, Doctor Guild Hall. This is going to handle not just the doctor profession, but bone doctors and surgeons and diagnosticians, anything to do with medical stuff can be taught here. I also like doing a weapon smith and armor. This is because it can be maybe one plus years until I start making weapons and armor. An engraver guild hall is good as well. As you may remember from my wealth exploit video, the best way to add wealth to a room is to engrave tiles with a highly skilled engraver so making sure i've got an engraver guild hall down early can be quite useful to get my dwarves trained up for thinking ahead a strand extractor guild hall can be good you will need strand extractors for processing adamantine in the late game and it can be quite slow for an unskilled dwarf to do. Oh boy, that was a long one. This one though will be a lot shorter. As you might remember from my very first video, when you go to mining and you go to auto, you can set your dwarves to automatically mine through a vein. So if I do this, for example, as the dwarves mine out, when they discover new squares, they will automatically select them to be mined. This can cause problems in certain situations. For example, here, this is an external staircase and there's currently an ant man in it because this is for the cavern lair so the cavern dwellers can move about between different cavern lairs and get killed by forgotten beasts and whatnot and if i was to leave this as is eventually the dwarves will mine through here and get into this area which obviously i don't want so to make sure we stay safe i can go into this blueprint only mode and select the area around it and these are all squares that would open up access to the staircase should they be mined because they're now in mark mode when the dwarf gets to this area he won't automatically mark them as green to continue mining they will avoid it and that way you can make sure that any veins that might connect to staircases or might be connecting over here out into the cavern layers won't get mined through and you won't end up having surprise backdoors into your base my next tip is to put your barracks inside your tavern We'll see here we have the crafts of stabbing's barracks using this plus icon i added it into my tavern so it's part of my tavern Although that step probably isn't necessary. The main reason I've done that is just so I can get the wealth added into the tavern. But the most important thing is that it is within line of sight of the main tavern area. Because this big area here is where my performers are going to perform. And now because my dwarves are training in these little wigs here, they can see the performances and they can benefit from them. You see that a lot of these guys have memories about seeing performances, even though they are currently training. And this is because they can see the performances while they're training, giving them a bunch of happy memories. A key part of managing stress in Dwarf Fortress is just making sure that your dwarves have lots of happy memories and happy thoughts. 
so by giving them ample opportunity to watch performances and listen to poetry and listen to stories that allows them to get extra happy thoughts even when they are being productive and training my next tip involves using dump zones as you might remember from my cage trap video in order to strip the armor and weapons from any creatures you have in your cages you have to first of all claim everything then you have to designate everything to be dumped and then you have to undump all of these cages specifically which you can do just by clicking on them or you can do by going into your stocks menu and disabling all of the cages from there the issue is where they're going to bring them you'll see here i've got a dump zone right next to them and you might think oh they'll bring them over there and they'll dump them over there that's incorrect what they're going to do is go prioritize any dump zone that allows them to dump the item into an open space so even though this is right here what's actually going to happen is if they're going to head up this way up these steps over here and they're going to dump it in through this hole here because this is the closest dump zone that lets them dump into an open space one way you might try to fix this which i've done here is put it over to here and now you might think oh that's fine now they're going to dump it into this pit here but that's also a mistake because you see this pit can be walked into from above here and what might happen is dwarves as they pass through this area in order to move out of the way they might choose to walk down in here while a dump is ongoing in fact this happened to our duchess here if you look at uh voicraft and look at her health you'll see that she can't stand and she can barely grasp and has more than enough damage and her head and hair aren't in a good way and uh lots of treatment this was due to a dump issue what happened was they were dumping items out of admin in that little area uh she was in the way so she opted to walk down the channel to move out of the way and everybody threw all the shields and the spears on top of her it was it wasn't pretty so what i would recommend that you do is in addition to making sure that there is a valid dump zone next to an area like this that will be doing a lot of dumping for items that you want to save probably want to head down the level and make sure your dwarves can access the area and also get rid of the channel like so and now they can't walk into it from up here and that way you should have less issues with dwarves accidentally walking down the pit and getting completely destroyed by all of their friends dumping spears on their heads next thing i want to talk about is when making a zone there are two options paint and multi with paint you just manually paint over a zone and you press accept and that creates a zone for multi you can just go over a big area and it's going to look for at every single sealed room and it's going to make them into the room there's some pros and cons to this the main pro with multi is that it lets you do a lot of stuff at once very fast so for example if let's say i want to make these two bedrooms really quick I just hit multi, I just do uh, a random square, and I do done, and there you go, it adds two done. While if I was to paint, then I would need to select it, press accept, then go back here again, select it, press accept. The main issue with using this approach is that you can only do it for sealed rooms. So if you want to say split a room into multiple zones, like for example, having the barracks inside of your taverns, I mentioned earlier in the video, then this approach won't work. But it's quite handy if say you have a ton of bedrooms you want to designate all at once. And yeah, that's just a couple of random tips and tricks. I hope you found this guide useful and if you did feel free to like and subscribe if you want to watch more content like this including more deep dives into specific mechanics feel free to watch any of the videos on screen right now you can catch me on twitch where i stream dwarf fortress pretty regularly hopefully i'll see you soon